Hi folks, welcome to the A Minute to Midnight show. This is Tony coming to you from New Zealand and with me on the show today I have my friend in Southern California, Joni Stahl. Uh, it's good to be talking to you again, Joni. Well, it's good to be talking to you too. It's good to be here as always, so thank you for having me on again. Yeah, I always look forward to our, our you know, conversations and... Um, they're always fruitful as far as I'm concerned and a lot of fun usually too but this, things aren't so much fun at the moment in terms of what's going on in the world it's quite concerning and you know watching people's reactions to situations particularly the Middle East situation and how it's polarizing people at the moment so um, I guess I'll throw it to you for some thoughts on on it all Joni. Yeah, well, I have a lot of thoughts, but there's only so much time. So, mm. <laughs> you know, there's, I think I'm not alone in saying this. Um, there's no getting away from this discussion. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, many of us that have channels, we like to have, you know, things that we teach, share, we have people on. But this is one thing that is, that is increasingly getting worse and worse. Mm. We know that we are in the epic final moments of this church age. We all really are in awe about what's happening and not and, I, and it's so many layers because we're watching all the nations. We're watching Zechariah 12, 3, all the nations, right, that they will re, um turn against Israel. It says all nations will turn against Israel. I'll tell you what, I'll just read that scripture. Good for I've you. Yeah, right. I was going to grab it, so it's good. I've got it right here in front of me. I'll, I'll start on verse 2. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people around about when they shall be in siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Thank you. I was going to look that up. I was going to have that ready. So I'm really glad you had that. I think that is absolutely descript. It is accurate. It is perfect. And it will come to pass. And I mean, we're seeing so many nations right now that are warring. Of course, we have an, we have the R with it, you know, that we, they have the Hezbollah bombing them on the north. They have Hamas on the west. Yemen just declared war against them. Algeria, of all places, declared war against them. I don't know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, right now, as we're seeing, we're looking at a five-front five war that Israel is surrounded by their traditional enemies. Uh, and then, of course, when it says all nations will be against it, you know, look at our nation. Our nation has tens of thousands of people marching mm. against Israel. And so we see that in London. We're seeing that in Oslo, Norway. We're seeing it, I think, maybe in Australia. Yeah. Is there yeah. anything happening in New Zealand? I think mm, not on much of a scale at this point. Mm. Mm. But basically all nations are against them. And it is becoming a burdensome stone. Yeah, And so... But there's so much to discuss here, but we were speaking a little bit before and I was explaining to you about the difficulty of nowadays, what do we talk about? Not that the Bible is obsolete. People still need deliverance. People still need to be saved. People still need to grow in the grace and knowledge of God. Those things will ever be. But right now, I'm just, I'm just saying that this morning I was in prayer about this and I was like, Lord, I just don't know exactly what you want me to talk about. I'm so full. I can kind of go in any direction, but I don't want it to be about me. Everybody has been reading every article. Everybody knows who's at war with who. Everybody is watching. I mean, they're micro, micro watching 
every news report, like on Telegram, which is really the gold mine of news. Um, but I, I just, I, I, I was praying, you know, and so I didn't hear anything, but I felt an emptiness. And an hour before I came here onto this, your show, I heard the Lord say to me, and I felt his presence, never stop loving. Mm. And it was so powerful. Because what is happening right now is all this focus is on the Jews in the worst light. Even people that call themselves Christians are calling them the worst names, accusing them of so many different things, right? You're Khazarian or you're not a Christian. You know, like we're talking about, you're not a Christian if you support the Jews. And there's this blindness. You know, it says in the word that the blindness in, in part has happened unto Israel. But I say to myself, blindness in big part has happened in the body of Christ. And everybody, I have never seen it in my whole life, Tony, that people that are Christ identifiers are so full of hatred, so full of anger, so full of wrath, so full of hate. I've never seen anything like that before. And I, I, I think that what the Lord is very concerned about, I know I'm not trying to read his mind. No one can know the mind of the Lord. But if you really ask Jesus what you want him, like anybody's listening, you really go to the Lord and you really lay down all your opinions and who you think the real Jews are or what you really believe a, a eschatological outcome is and, you know, trying to be, you know, right with certain people. And I'm going to look this up. I'm going to prove them wrong. When you lay all of that aside and you really ask Jesus Christ, what do you think, Lord? What do you want, Lord? He's not going to want any of us, anybody to be doing any of that because he gave us a commandment. It's not a suggestion. It's not a recommendation. He gave us a new commandment. And that commandment is in John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And this is not the time to be biting and devouring each other. You know, and I'm just going to say this and I'll turn it over to you. You know, all the years that most of us have been Christians, and I think I talk for a lot of people, you have to develop kind of a thick skin. You, you, do, you do really have to become tough, but with the heart, a soft heart. Because when you really, truly serve Jesus Christ, then you are going to take heat from the enemy. And even when Jesus says this, and I know that he's speaking about in Matthew 24, that the, that the members of one's own household will become their worst enemy. And I think about the household of faith. And I think to myself, but hasn't that been happening actually in your house, Lord? That people who say, no, I love Jesus. I'm born again. I praise his name. Yet they're full of hatred and they're angry. And they're so fixated on the Jews. I've never seen anything like it. It's such a icy coldness that has come over them. But he gave us a commandment. You know, Jesus says, why do you say unto me, Lord, Lord, but do not do those things that I ask you? I'll turn it over to you right now because I think you've got some good stuff to share in that, to give a response on that. Well, uh, um, the th the thing is that I'm seeing a, a lot of it, you know, look, even people are polarized one way or the other. There are those that are so supportive of Israel that they can't really see, you know, that there can be evil in the leadership. And I do, I see that. I see the Freemasonry and Illuminati and all that in leadership in Israel. And it's been there a long time. 
but the, that still doesn't nullify God's promises to the people of the land. And uh, there's a lot in the Old Testament you can't just throw out. And that's not the same as salvation, because like the book of Acts, it says in 4.12, there's, sal- well, I'll, I'll just re- find it. I guess I'll read it quickly. Um, 4.12 says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And that's talking about Jesus, the name of Jesus. So whether you're Jew or Gentile, there's no salvation except through Jesus Christ. If you reject Jesus and you're a Jew, your fate is sealed. And the same if you're a Gentile. But that's a distinctly different thing from God's promises to the nation of the Jews, you know, uh, and and the land. That's a whole different thing. It's not salvation, eternal salvation. That's God's promises to, you know, what he considers his land. Um, and then you have in Zechariah we read in chapter 12, well, it says in verse 9, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. So that's in the future. That hasn't happened yet. And you can't nullify those promises. You can't say, oh, those promises don't exist anymore. That word, you know, because then you make God out to be a liar. And there's tons of other scriptures all throughout the Old Testament that have not been yet fulfilled that can't be fulfilled by the church because we're not all going to be gathered into Jerusalem and so on as Christians, you know. So there's a whole lot of promises that God made to the Jewish people completely separate to salvation that haven't been fulfilled yet. That's what I see. Uh, and and even, well, Luke, who wrote the gospel, you know, he was, he was the only one that wrote a gospel that wasn't a Jew. He was a Gentile. But if you look in the book of Acts, which Luke also wrote, in the very first chapter it says from verse 6, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So they asked him, you know, when's the kingdom going to be restored to Israel? Now, Jesus could have said, oh, don't you idiots get it? There's no more Israel. There's no more kingdom. This land's done with. Jesus didn't say that. He didn't deny the fact that a kingdom would be again, you know, for Israel. So, you know, take what you want out of that, people. But I I see a completely separate issue from salvation that Jesus was talking about. And end times prophecy um, from Ezekiel 36, 37, 38, 39, that stuff has to be fulfilled. And it's not being fulfilled by, you know, just believers from all the ends of the earth. It's a specific people that it, it's addressed to. So what are your thoughts on that, journey? Anyway, I've probably rambled a little bit, and I know a lot of people won't like what I've just said, but that's how I'm seeing it. Well, you know something, we have to own it. Listen, everybody that likes to attack what we believe owns what they believe and they're confident in what they believe. Hmm. And they don't have a problem saying what they say to us. And so because maybe our personality is a little bitter, you know, we're nice and we want to do the right thing in the Lord. You know, we don't want to react harshly, but there is a holy boldness that God wants us to have. Paul, the apostle said, pray for Pray for us that we may speak the word with boldness as it ought to be spoken. And unless and until that, and unless and until we own our doctrine that we have believed in, then we're going to just be punching bags to this world. I'm totally fine with people. Not I don't need I don't need a, to people to agree with me. I'm not desperate for friends. I'm not desperate for subscribers. I'm not desperate for people to give me money. I'm not desperate. I am not desperate at all. I love the Lord. I love his word. I own it. And people are free to like it or not like it. People are free. God gives everybody a free will to choose. Now, if somebody's going to be bombastic and try to say, you know, be awful about it, then we have boundaries and we say, you know, we don't have to take, you know, we can we can have a discussion but if, it, if it's a discussion where it's not really a discussion, but it's meant to destroy, 
then it's done. I'm not called, I don't have a moral duty and neither do you. We don't have a moral duty to make it, to get people to believe what we do. No. We are vessels of the Lord. And when he gives us something to understand and believe, then we are going to stand in it. And you know, the very thing that we believe and stand in, we have to ask ourselves, are you ready to stand in that on that day before the Lord when you stand before him face to face? You, I mean, look, we have staked our eternal life in Jesus Christ. This is serious. This is not a game. I'm not going to spend time. You know, when I was younger, I'd spend time. No, no, no. This is what he means. Let me get back to you. Let me get, you know, and it went nowhere. All it was was a flesh war. Mm. Now that we're older, I say we, and I know many people are listening. There's no time for that. If they want to believe Israel is the, you know, the worst, the Jews are the Khazari and all those things, let them. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I know the truth and I'm sticking to that truth. And, you know, I know I sound maybe a little harsh. I don't mean to be harsh. It's a firmness that I have. Jesus made no apologies. I mean, he said some stuff where people are like, what do you mean eat your flesh and drink your blood? 70 people left him in one day. Mm. He wasn't mm. afraid. He wasn't worried that 70 people left him in one day. You know, listen, when and I know this is probably going in a, a direction, but I'm just going to go with it. When when you choose to serve Jesus Christ, you'll start off with a group of people. You'll lean on a lot of arms. You'll have a lot of little kingdoms living inside of you. You are going to serve a lot of different little masters. But as, it, as long as you stick with the Lord, little by little, you're going to start getting rid of those little masters. You're going to start overthrowing those little kingdoms that are alive in you. Because he's teaching you how to stand and to go into spiritual maturity. And, you know, the, the whole thing about needing to be right, there's something wrong with that person. Okay, now the, only the Holy Spirit can talk to them and can convict them. I am not that I'm not the Holy Spirit, but I want to say this to people that are listening that have ulterior views than us. Own what you believe. Just simply own it, okay, and be happy in it. And it's not your moral duty to try to force it on any of us to believe it. We say, go ahead and believe it. Listen, God has this window of time. It's the 2,000 years, and he's still in heaven. And during this time, all Jews and Gentiles are concluded that they are guilty of sin. Yeah. Romans chapter three. Okay. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For there is no one righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.25. For all have sinned, right? And fallen short of the glory of God. And so Jew and Gentile alike, there's this window of salvation. Now, the Jews right now, they are, this is going to be their time of judgment. This is the time of Jacob's trouble. I believe we have just early entered into it. And that you can see that in Jeremiah 31, verse 7. It says, but they will be saved out of it. How are they going to be saved out of it? Romans eleven twenty six: for all Israel shall be saved. For if the casting away, it says this in another place in Romans 11, if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them but life from the dead? You see, when Jesus Christ comes again, there's, there's going to be a seven-year period of time, I believe, that will start from the time that the Antichrist confirms a covenant of peace. And who that man is, he's not revealed to us yet. Is he alive? Without a doubt. And I believe that what is happening right now in Israel is going to, it's going to be built up so massively that only 
the Samson option, nuclear options are what they're even talking about right now. But that can't be yet because there has to be a seven year period of time. There has to be a three and a half year, at least the 1,260 days of the last half of the tribulation where they are going to, it's, I mean, the whole world is going to be caught in a snare. When Jesus says, not, um, yeah, Jesus says in Luke 21, I believe it's 36, don't quote me, 34, 36, it says, take heed unto yourselves. This is for future, that your hearts be not overcharged with overeating, with drunkenness, and with the cares of this life, so that that day overtakes you at unawares. It said, uh, for it'll come upon this whole earth like a snare. It's a death trap because it'll happen suddenly. And God is meticulous about time. If you haven't noticed, he's never late. He knows exactly what he's doing. It's already been done. The works are finished from the foundation of the world. The Lord's throne is in heaven. He does so ever what he hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. It's done. And so the Jews have to pass through. It's called Ezekiel's melting pot. And Luke and uh, Ezekiel chapter 20. It said he will bring them through the fire like lead and like tin. I don't have it before me. People can look it up. He said, and I will melt you. It is also called in another place in Ezekiel chapter 22. It says, for I will make the whole house of Israel pass under the rod. Okay, it's very interesting because they pass through the Red Sea. And then the next passing is they pass under the rod. And then the last thing is they pass into the millennial kingdom and they become the chief of nations. Now, but this whole micro focus on the nitpicking of, did you hear what they said? And I was listening to this guy and the, and the Jews come from this and the Jews come from that and this and that. They're not the real Jews. And look, I get it. We know what that government in Israel is. We know it is not, pardon the expression, no pun intended, kosher. We know what it is. But it is what it is. It's part, God knows all about it. You think God is sitting up there right now going, yeah, there's no real Jews. Because if there's no real Jews, how does Revelation chapter 7 take place? When he takes from it 12,000 from each 12 tribes of those Jews. How is he doing that? So everybody's meticulizing on this, who the real Jews are. I call it pointless. If you're truly serving Jesus Christ, it's a pointless venture. And so much is being lost right now in the body of Christ because everybody's so focused on fighting with each other. You have people all around you that are hungry. They are scared. They are lonely. They are desperate. They need encouragement. And all this effort is being wasted on being right about who the Jews are. We have work to do, people. We're alive right now. Right now. Not because it was random and God just, well, we'll let him live. We'll let her live another five years. God is meticulous. It's, you know, it says in Psalm, uh, it says in the word that he knows a number of our hairs. And they're falling out all the time and we're regrowing new hairs. You realize the kind of God that we serve? We think we know him and we don't know him. He is vast. He is beyond our understanding. Even Job says, how little is known of him. And yet everybody presumes to say, thus saith the Lord, and this is what the Jews are. This is what this is that. This is everything and all else. God wants humble workers. He wants good, honest people that he can use. He wants people whose hands are clean, whose hearts are pure. He wants people that are like torches right now. He wants people to be out there. He wants people in their homes, among their friends. Let your light shine. But everybody's light isn't shining right now, except there's a false light in them because Satan's pumping them up with so much hatred. 
And we are so close to the end and we need to be people that Christ can count on. Let the unsaved, let the fighters fight with each other. But that's not our call. That's not God's commandment that I just read. We're not commanded to do that. We're commanded. We're like a division of his heavenly, of his army. We are like a division. And so we are, this is in a way a race against time. Because there is a little time left. And if you are truly serving the Lord. And you really want to be used by him. Then you need to lay everything down and go to him and ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because it's I promise you, I guarantee it. Jesus has a plan for your personal life, what you should be doing at this end and not to be caught up and swept away in all kinds of this garbage because it's not going to enter into your eternal life. Only the things that are done in the spirit of his love will enter in to your eternal life. Period. So that's, it's important to say that because, you know, Israel God has a plan for Israel. It says in Jeremiah 31, 35 through 36, and he speaks for himself. He says, thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. God has made an everlasting covenant, which cannot be broken. And like you said, if he was to break this covenant, then I guess the New Testament covenant, we can't trust him for anything. Then the whole thing becomes a lie. Then nothing, we can't believe in him. You know what he said in Psalm, in Psalm 107? It's beautiful. He talks about Israel how they were constantly blowing it. Then they were like starting, from, it's like a narrative. It starts from Egypt. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the field of Zoan. He did signs and wonders. He brought them out. Then they complained, oh, is there not enough? Uh, can he make a table in the wilderness? Can he feed us? And the Lord heard that and he sent the quail. We know the whole story. It goes through the whole narrative. And then time and time again, they keep coming back and coming back. Oh, we're sorry, God. We we forgot that God was our Deemer and the Most High God, our Savior. And then it says they soon forgot my. They soon forgot that I was their God. Then they began to lust even worse, and so we see a worsening. But the same goes with even the body of Christ. It even says in Luke eighteen verse eight, when the Son of Man, it says, when the Son of Man cometh, will he even find faith? You know, we need to like slow our roll. We need to really individually remember that God, let me finish what it says in 107. At the very end of 107, it got so bad that it said, for God remembered his covenant for them because they'd forgotten. And that whole thing, that chapter I call, you know what I call it? The forg forgetting and remembering. Because the whole thing is what happens to people when they forget God. You become cold. You begin to nitpick. There's no love in you. You're self-centered. You're arrogant. You have a religious spirit. You begin to, like it says in Luke, you begin to beat your men, men and maid servants, and to eat and drink and be drunken with them. You, your heart begins to become dead. And so you have this exterior. I'm going to tell you what the Lord says. Mm -mm. The Lord wants us to remember Him, that He is the Lord, and to trust what he is doing, that he has a plan that's going to go past the time that we're in now. It's going, he's going to have a second coming. 
There's going to be a thousand year millennial reign wherein dwelleth righteousness. At the end of that thousand year millennial reign, that's the seventh day of the, the sabbatical millennial reign, the se seven years of rest, seven years of peace. And then Satan is loose for a little season. He gathers what? How many? A multitude without number. And what do they do? They go back to the land of Israel. He, they surround the beloved city. And at that point, it says in Revelation 20, verse 9, where they encamp about the beloved city. Therefore, God sendeth forth light. A fire comes out of heaven and devours them. That next verse, verse 10. And Satan is taken and he is cast into the lake of fire. The first two recipients were the false prophet and the antichrist who were already judged. They bypass. I mean, they just go straight into the lake of fire alive. So then we go into that eighth day, which would be the eternity of eternities, people in heaven. There's a new earth, which would be the age of ages. And it goes on forever. They eat of the tree of life. You could read about that in Revelation 22, which is the new earth. Revelation 21 is us in heaven. So if if you're just very short-sighted, you're just looking at these little, like through little binoculars, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, look where they come from and the Rothschilds and this and that. And there's truth to all these things. It's not to be completely cast away. It's good to understand, but not if it turns you into a person full of hate because God is love. And whoever's listening and you're angry, he loves you. You can be mad at me. I can handle it. But God loves you. He died for you just like he died for me. Just remember that God is love. And he loves his people. He knows what to do with them. He knew what to do with us. Listen to what it says. I'll say this and I'll stop. Listen to what it says in Titus. Chapter 3, verse 3 and 8. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. So he's giving us, he's not, again, this is not a suggestion. These are not recommendations. These are things we're told to do. And if, there, if, you, if the root behind it isn't love, what are you doing? You're just, we well, are going around with Peter's sword, thinking that you're helping Jesus out and you're cutting off people's ears. You're maiming them, you're wounding them. And we're called to be sons of God without rebuke, harmless without rebuke in a crooked and perverse generation. As we shine like stars in the universe, as we hold out the word of life, I don't want to look like that. You don't want to be hateful. You don't want to look like that. You don't. You want to look so different. You can be bold. Look at Stephen's face. Stephen's face shone like that of an angel. He was full of the Holy Spirit. He wasn't afraid to die. And he was so full of the Holy Spirit that at the end, they killed him. But before he died, he forgave those that killed him. This is a true born again life. So we're not here as believers to attack one another. I mean, it's up to everybody, right? Everybody has to decide who they serve and who he is because most of us, all of us, all of us enter in by believing. But we have to go on into the knowing. 
it says in John, John chapter, um, well, it's John chapter 15, verse three, it says, for this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the true living God, right? That they may know thee. But it says in Jeremiah chapter 9, 24, it says, let not the rich man glory in his riches, and neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not uh, the strong man glory in his strength, but let him that glorieth, gl uh, glory in me, uh, that he will understand and know me rather. See, he, he wants to be known. And if you truly don't know Jesus, then you're off on your own. Moses' face shone because he was always looking upward. Stephen's face shone because he was always looking upward. You reflect who you're looking at. You take on the personality of your master that you follow. Because I'll tell you right now, all that hating of those people. I mean, would it be right for me to say, well, I hate all people from Bolivia. They're horrible. They're involved in Santeria. They're involved in witchcraft. Let me tell you what kind of people those are. That's a dangerous place to be because you're standing in judgment of people Christ died for. So God will never forget or forsake Israel. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. And he, he has, I think that he has, is from what I could feel from him today, when he said, when I said, when he finally answered, he said, never stop loving. Because Jesus never stopped loving. They beat him. They whipped him. They put, they rammed a crown of thorns on his head. They br brutally mocked him, but they couldn't stop him from loving. And if something or someone can stop you from loving, then they, there is a power that's pulling you away from Jesus Christ. And then you become a spring shut up and a fountain sealed. You can't flow. So I like this quote, look how a single candle can both defy and define the darkness. You can be that one person. You know who said that? Anne Frank. Mm -hmm. That beautiful 13-year-old girl. And I'll finish with this. She said, I see the world gradually being turned into a wilderness. I hear the ever approaching thunder, which will destroy us too. I can feel the sufferings of millions. And yet, if I look up into the heavens, I think that it will all come right. That this cruelty too will end. And that peace and tranquility will return again. She went on to say, who has afflicted this upon us? And who has made us Jews different from all the other people? Who has allowed us to suffer so terribly up till now? It is God that has made us as we are. But it will be God, too, who will raise us up again. If we hear all this suffering and if there are still Jews left when it is over, then Jews, instead of being doomed, will be held up as an example. And who knows? It might even be our religion from which the world and all the peoples learn good. And for that reason, and that reason alone, do we have to suffer now? We can never become just Netherlanders or just English or representatives of any country for that matter. We will always remain Jews, but we want to. We want to, too. That's pretty powerful because she was saying things prophetically. She didn't understand what she was saying. Because there will be a resurrection of that nation. And that little sliver of land is not the topographical original land. When Jesus Christ comes again, 
the topographical expansion of the land will go past the border of Lebanon. It'll go into uh, Egypt and it'll stretch out, you know, eastward. Because many nations, and all nations, people, languages, people, tongues, and nations will flow into it. Amen. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, we mustn't let our love grow cold. That's the main thing I get out of this. We've got to, you know, keep that there. And, um, yeah, it's it's fine to recognise that there are things wrong being done by, you know, people in Israel. And you can feel sorry legitimately for some of the people in Gaza that are not really probably tied in with Hamas and so on and don't want it and they're innocent, you know, and and that's fine to feel injustice for those people as well. You know, it's it's human nature. Um, but in the end, it, w- w- we can't change it anyway and we have to realise that prophecy is being fulfilled and, and at some point, I mean, it does say in Zephaniah 2, um, and verse 4, for Gaza shall be forsaken and Ashkelon a desolation, and they shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday and Ekron shall be rooted up. So stuff like that has to happen, whether we believe this or believe that. You know, it, it, God's word is going to happen no matter what Joni Stahl or I believe or you believe who are listening. So let's just leave it in God's hands because there isn't any answer to this whole world peace and war until the return of Jesus that is the only answer you can come up with a pet theory of how to solve this problem but it isn't going to happen the way it's going to end up being solved seemingly in the eyes of the world will be with the rising of the antichrist at some point in world government which I think is the goal of what's happening here and that's going to be overthrown when Jesus returns and that's when the real answer comes so you and I can't actually change it um, let's just keep our hearts right towards people around us and that's all we can do. So, okay, that's all I'm going to say. Joni, where, pe- where do people find you online? They can find me on YouTube, Rumble, and BitChute. And uh, just under Joni Stahl's Field Notes, is it? Or Yep, that's right. Joni Stahl's Field Notes. All right. Well, thank you again for a, a good discussion. I, I know it'll have polarised people and and things, but I think you know it was it was needed. So thank you, Joni. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Cheers, folks. Don't forget our website is a minute to midnight dot com, and please subscribe to us there. And we have a bit shoot rumble. YouTube and Apple podcast channels as well but our website is primarily where you'll always find our uh, shows and so forth and A Minute to Midnight is run 100% by donations and a big thank you to the people that do donate to help us keep it running and if you want to do help us out that way you can donate at a minute to midnight.com and the music used I've written, played and recorded and God bless, stay safe and God willing we'll be back with another show in a few days time 